Hello, welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I'm going to talk to you about By Ash, Oak and Thorn by Melissa Harrison. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. I'm a qualified primary school teacher who reviews great books for home or school and for adults as well. Today I want to talk to you about a new release it's published on the 5th of May, which by the time this video comes out may actually be today. Melissa Harrison is an award-winning nature writer. She's written lots of books for adults apparently, and this is her first book for children. And it's about three tiny ancient beings called hidden folk. The hidden folk are guardians of the wild, and these particular ones are called Moss, Burnett and Cumulus, these three that star in this book. Star, the protagonists of this book, and they live in an old ash tree at the bottom of someone's garden, and people can't see them because humans, mortals as they call us, they don't notice necessarily nature all around them, and they've forgotten how to speak the wild argo, which is a form of language that they all the, the wild creatures speak to each other. So they hidden folk apparently used to be absolutely everywhere in the landscape looking after copses of trees looking after rivers taking care of nature and as humans have sort of grown and expanded the places they live in as humans settled from being hunter gatherers to being farmers they've slowly but surely kind of shifted and moved uh, the landscape so that hidden folk are sort of being squeezed out of places so when we start the book cumulus who's the most ancient of the three who remembers the dinosaurs, um, he is starting to disappear. So one of his hands is starting to disappear and they feel that there's a big change coming and things are, things are happening. And then the ash tree that they live in is completely like destroyed in a storm one night. So they decide they need to go and find some hidden folk to see if they know what's going on with Cumulus and um, if something's happening to any other hidden folk. And so they start out on this journey looking for more hidden folk and they cr cross the country with the help of various animals and they have adventures cross the country and then they decide that they might end up having to go into the mortal hive which is basically a city so throughout the book melissa harrison treats us to the most lovely descriptions of nature and she uses all of the proper names for the trees for the animals and she intersperses it with tons and tons of facts and i learned an absolute ton myself while i was reading this book um, all really interesting facts about uh, animals. I really like the bits about the urban animals because I live in London. I found it really interesting about the plants and animals and the adaptability of the British flora and fauna um, that we see all around us and how clever all these animals and these plants are to survive in an environment that we've made and created as humans. So like the London plane tree, which is an iconic tree in London, I think they're the most, like the trees that you see absolutely everywhere in London, they're really well adapted to deal with pollution and they actually clean a lot of the air in London. And they, they, um, you know, their their bark peels away um, and strips like uh, the, the pollution that sticks to their bark doesn't stay on them long because bits peel away, and the leaves capture um, bits of pollution and shake it out of the air. So they're really, really amazing. Uh, so the the ultimate message of the book, though, it's all about the fact that humans have been slowly but surely. Uh, forgetting that we're also part of the natural world I mean we have forgotten it and that their mission and the end of it all was to find other hidden folk and they it has hints of the borrowers actually because they're really tiny people and they make the best the most ingenious thing use of things that humans have left behind so kind of a little bit like the borrowers I'm also a sucker for any nature writing for children, any descriptions of nature, like the wind in the willows, watership down. Um, I'm absolutely a sucker for that kind of writing. I love it. And so this kind of reminded me of that. Very wholesome writing. These are really wholesome characters. And whilst it was a middle grade book, I didn't feel like the characters were necessarily middle grade characters. They kind of read like a bit younger to me. So I think this book could be read with children aged seven up. There's some complex language in it, but if you're doing it as a read aloud or um, reading together, I think it'd be a lovely book for younger children as well. The characters and the relationships, they're very, very sweet. And they're like any of us, these characters, they, they fall out, they argue, they bicker, they feel sad, they feel anxious. And what I thought was really lovely is Melissa Harrison intersperses constant advice on why they might be behaving in that way and and why you might feel angry or anxious when you do and why like one character for instance they have an argument and she writes actually what he was doing was he was afraid of doing a particular thing but instead of 
being able to say he was afraid he just had an argument with his friends because that's that was his response to it was to be to be cross and angry so absolutely love the characters they're very sweet and like i said whilst it was from aimed at children aged nine up they're quite innocent characters um overall very they read to me more like um sort of children's age you know for younger children it read it read, it read a bit more to me like but i loved it i just felt cozy and warm when i was reading it i learned a lot reading it and i think it's a lovely lovely book it's out on the 5th of may i was given an advanced reader copy from chicken house books who i i adore as a publisher they publish amazing children's books um they publish books by some of my favorite authors kieran millwood hargrave who i've got a video on one of her books um, and Asher and the Spirit Bird, which is one, one of the great books. I've got a really long length video on by Jasmine de Billen. So they're a great publisher. They seek out the best writers. They have a competition every year with, in conjunction with the Times to find new talented writers. And not only that, they make the most beautiful books with the most beautiful covers. So hopefully I've got a picture up here for you to see the picture of um, by Ash Oak and Thorn, because that's a lovely bit of cover art as well. So I'd highly recommend the book for anyone who likes, uh, for children who like nature writing. Um, I think it's got a really strong message about how we are part of the natural world and we have to take care of it and be, be responsible for our part in it. And that we don't own the earth, you know, there are other creatures and plants that uh, other living beings around the planet who have as much right to be here as we do and humans need to remember that. And also that you get to keep an eye out for all the nature around you. Our houses are full of are full of creatures. Our you know our gardens. Um, it, it really made me think. Right, I must keep my eyes open for you know the insects and the the small creatures that live in and around, especially built up areas like London. And um, yeah, I absolutely um, loved it. It was a really lovely read. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. I put review videos out on a Wednesday and I put uh, longer TBRs and other video content out on a Saturday. Hopefully you like this video enough to click like and subscribe and I'll see you again here soon. Bye.